Um, I'm Charlene De Leon Jones, and I'm the executive director of Film Alula. I think the conversations are really coming from the excitement around the festival generally with what's happening in the region with film, with the screen sector, with the huge amount of national up and coming talent and the international interests. So a lot of the conversations are just the, the questions around what does it mean to film here? How do we get involved? What are the logistics? Do you have crew? Um, how do we come and spend some time and see you? And these conversations are sort of moved on in some ways, whereas before there was some general sort of vague interest. Oh, this is new. This is interesting to now. How actually do we arrive? How do we get something done? How do we work together? What's been really interesting, those as you walk around, those conversations are in different languages. You'll hear lots of French conversations, English conversations, Arabic language conversations. There's a real melting pot of conversations that are happening, not just from a destination perspective, but also from developments. What types of stories are we interested in on people pitching the ideas that they have? So it's just been all day, every day, sort of really energizing conversations on every aspect of, of, of the screen sector. So at a national level, the Saudi Film Commission has released a 40% rebate, which is really competitive. But as we know, rebates are as good as the environment they put them in, right? So we have the Saudi Film Commission rebate, which is up to 40%. But at a local level, what we do, we will, one, support any applications to the Saudi Film Commission. And clearly, we have a really strong relationship with them. We'll also do some of the work around looking at your... Um, production budgets and does that make sense and is it is it useful for being here because quite often productions coming in are filming in Saudi for the first time so they need a benchmark of well this is our cost does that make sense also from a script perspective and locations where what should we, we be looking at so with the rebate we do lots of the practical support around pulling the, that information together also, fortunately, we're really well resourced within a film Alula. So very often we're finding that productions are eligible for the 40% rebate and they're also eligible for in-kind and cash incentives with us at a local level as well. And that's for national projects as well as projects that are international. First of all, to be in Alula it has to be seen to be believed. Right? It really is a spectacular place which doesn't feel or look or sound like anywhere else. And I say sound because it's so vast. Often what the sound is stillness and silence and a sense of being out of time. So am I in the future or am I in the past? And um, with regards to creating an infrastructure around that, with a location as beautiful as that, you get some very high-end tourism, right? And you have a lot of focus on um, hotel room occupancy, as in they're often occupied. You know, it's a, it's a hot ticket to be in Alula. So one of the first things we did was ensure that any visiting film crews, any productions, always had somewhere beautiful to stay that was affordable and specially defined for them. So if you come to Alula, the, one of the first most practical things is that we have film residences. We already have 150 self-contained residences up and running. It's almost its own sort of community of a nice pool and facilities. And we have a further 150 being built across the course of the next six to nine months with production offices and support services on site as well. So the first thing is we're focused on what is the experience of filmmakers when they come to Alula? Do they actually get to have some as aspect of what it means to be there from a, a quality of life, from a well-being perspective? So we've designed accommodation very carefully. With regards to the practicalities of filming itself, we've looked really carefully at how do we partner and advise around what third parties you work with. And we're investing very heavily over the next five years into um, studio development as well. So you're able to come from a location perspective, but you're also to, able to come and be supported from a studio perspective as well. We want to be not just a destination, but really a hub for creative communities, a hub for an active activity, a hub for regardless of the time of year and being in the desert and how hot it is, somewhere where you can work comfortably. And we were really investing in 
not produce not just producing great content but being somewhere where great people and great skills are developed and produced as well which is the education element that that, that crew element as well to any kind of experience of filming in Lula. Most people know that if you are going to create a filming destination that works and works in a long time in the long term you have to have a crew who are readily available um, and who are local right and where that crew five, 10, 15 years from now, our HODs are well known, um, but where you can largely have your crew sourced locally because it makes so much of a difference, not just to the economy of filming, but to really benefit the local economy from an employment and development perspective as well. With regards to the investing we're doing, we're doing a series of boot camps and those boot camps are often um, introducing um, local people to the various different areas um, that would be involved in the film sector or production. Often people will say, I want to be an actor, I want to be a director. And that's very much because they have no sense of the vast range of careers. So there's initially an introduction of a range of different types of roles, skill sets over an intense sort of 10 day period, which is why it's a boot camp to just give people a sort of, you know, thrown in um, really intensive experience. And in some cases we've been fortunate, we've been able to then put them directly onto a set, um, an active live set as to what does that mean in, in, in practice. Then we also have the ability to train people in more detail, whether that be from an international training perspective or bringing that in-house and then in some cases where it's appropriate sending them to some of the leading film schools around the world but right now um, the focus is local training um, with international collaborations. So Alula has its own dedicated international airport which is um, sort of 10 minutes from the studios we're building, 15 minutes from our accommodation and easy access to Ulula generally. But I was at dinner yesterday with our chief of tourism and I, had, I was speaking about some conversations I'd had with some French producers earlier that day. And one of their questions had been, well, how easy is it to get there? It looks otherworldly. Is it going to take a world of time to actually get there? Um, and he said, oh, no, great. Uh, you know, our um, Paris to Alula flights restart again tomorrow because it's, it's sort of different parts of, of the year. And I said, oh, well, how long is that flight? He says, five and a half, six hours, right? The other flights, direct flights we have internationally, you have Dubai, Cairo, I think Jordan's online. Um, there constantly are more... Um, destinations coming online and it's very quick easy to get from other bits of Saudi into Alula with short flights. I would say the other thing to bear in mind is that in some cases where we've had large productions coming in it has made sense for us to arrange transport directly from location to location just to cut down on some of the time that's that's spent in the air. That's one of the advantages you have in an up and coming location like this, you have really strong WhatsApp relationships with the local airport, whereby you say, right, I want to bring in a flight at this time, or, or can we, with the airlines, have an additional flight coming in from, say, Dubai or, or, or Riyadh? So the air travel aspect is probably one of the easiest aspects of, of coming to Alula. One of the things that stand out about having Kandahar here, where you have hundreds of crew, you have a number of celebrities that people recognise from film, is that excitement from local people, right? And that excitement manifesting in wanting to make sure from a hospitality perspective, everything is as easy as possible. So the first thing was just the level of excitement from the local community and beyond about hosting a production as large as that. In terms of lessons learned, when you are running a big jagged juggernaut like that into a new location it stress tests every area of um, what it means to produce so it taught us real lessons around what it means to have a, a customs system that works really well for that type of film what it means to have a visa system that's really easy and actually it gave birth to an entire new department in my team so in our team we now have government relations experts so that you can speak to us on a Wednesday morning about visas and have your visa your um, your work visa for film production Wednesday evening 
right? So or from a um, customs perspective, we have really close relationships with the national authority. So we can step that through and make that really easy. Um, other aspects that it taught us is the importance of the team we have. So we have a team of um, lots of international as well as sort of really strong regional experts in production. So we are there um, not so much to handhold, mm. but to catch you if you start slipping, right? So if there are areas where something feels, feels un- unfamiliar, we not only have people who are really au fait with the local environment, but they're really au fait with what it means to film somewhere else and therefore what your expectation is. So, so that's in place as well. The other things we learned was just around those importance of developing those really good relationships, because as a result of that production, other productions are interested and want to come in. And one of the best way to sort of develop a really strong destination is to do things well enough that people want to come back and work with you.